Chelsea and today I'm taking you on a houseplant tour video thing going on. I did a video two weeks ago about the house that I moved into after spending three years on the road as a nomad and moving into a brick and mortar home and I couldn't stand to be away from nature so I brought as much of it into my house as possible. So I wanted to show you guys how I did that, take you on a tour of all my plants, tell you a little bit about them, whether or not they're easy to care for. And this might give you some ideas for your own house if you're trying to incorporate nature into your house a little bit better or if you just want to improve the air quality of your home or just like be cute, you know what I mean? Just be cute. I'll show you guys all the plants that I've collected and I will talk to you about how easy they are to care for, what I was expecting. I'll show you a couple plants that I've been propagating and then um, tell you a little bit about like their seasons and stuff. Before we get started, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Why is my watch showing my video? That's weird. Okay. Uh, anyway, before we get started, I would just like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot and lets me know that you guys like what I'm doing. And if you don't like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs down, but like also tell me why. Leave a comment. Give me some criticism. I don't mind it. Without further ado, let's just, uh, let's just move along because I am moving around too much in this chair. So first and foremost, in my living room, I've got 34 plants in here. And we start at the top of my triangle with a Norfolk pine. This thing gets watered every five to 10 days in January. It's been really cool to have this just because it's like, doesn't require a whole, whole, whole bunch of light or anything. Indirect light is fine, which it does get in this little corner. And then I've got some poinsettias. I actually got them around Thanksgiving, so back in November, and they were all red and full and really pretty. And then I've got a yellow one as well. But these are the prettiest during the winter season anyway, so a lot of them have lost a bunch of leaves and everything. And most people just throw their poinsettias away after the season over season is over but i'm going to try to keep them all year you repot them once a year with fresh soil and they should like return back to you just fine so these are my first poinsettias and i'm going to see how they work out and then i tried to pot a little magnolia tree that i found somewhere i don't know how this one's gonna go uh, i've never potted a magnolia tree before and I know that it's not doing super well right now because it's winter time, but we'll see what happens in the spring with it. Moving over to the side, we've got a corn stalk plant, corn plant. It's really cool. It has these stalks that look like tree trunks. And then there's these green spouts of what looks like a crazy hat or hair coming out the top of each of the stalks. I accidentally, uh, like tried to take off a dry leaf one time and the entire like shoot with all the green came off of it and so i just repotted that because it had roots attached to it and i'm trying to see how that goes so we'll see if it grows a new plant or not moving on over i've got a golden pothos which i will talk about a little bit more later i have several golden pothos plants um throughout my house and I'm actually propagating a couple right now. This one is doing okay. It's grown really long vines, but ever since uh, like I've separated it from the mother plant, uh, it's only growing a little bit. So we'll see how this one turns out. And then I've got one of my favorite plants, which is a snake plant or the mother-in-law tongue plant. And I think this thing is so cool because all the leaves grow straight up and they're pretty stiff. But the pattern on the leaves is so beautiful to me. I really like snake plants and I would like to try to propagate some more of these. I think that this is one of the easiest plants that I have to care for. Aside from watering and stuff, it doesn't need a whole lot of attention and it does really well on its own. And then one of the most popular plants that everyone has is a parlor palm. This one is pretty big. I got it at Lowe's. It was like 50% off. I think Lowe's is having a sale right now on plants, like the big plants. Anything in a 10 inch pot is like 50% off. So 
I love parlor palms. It's a good way to add a lot of green to a space and they're insanely easy to take care of. Their lighting requirements are easy. Their watering requiring requirements are easy and they just look really cool. I've got this little dude that I can't remember the name of right now, but I will put it up on the screen once I look it up. Um, it's got like a little braided trunk. I've actually got two plants with braided trunks and I think they're so cool. And then I've got this huge bad boy who is a massive cane. It's like a kind of like a corn plant that I showed you before that I accidentally took the whole green thing off of. This one is way bigger and it should develop a stalk one day and grow up thicker. But right now, ever since I've had it, it's been doing super well, but it has not developed a stalk yet. So it just has this big head and it's sitting in this big bucket on wheels because it's actually pretty heavy when it's full of water and I can't lift it. So I wheel it around. These are a bunch of little plants that I have propagated. I, this is my first time propagating a bunch of plants and I think they've gone super well so far. All of my plants have developed roots and I've done strictly water propagation. One of them I am currently transferring right now to be in soil since all of the leaves have gotten their roots. So I'm doing it slowly by putting them in little lava rock. I think golden pothos are my number one plant that I would recommend to propagate if you are new to propagating plants. They are super easy and I will make an entire video about how to do that properly next week on Monday. I've also got different forms of ivy, a winter creeper, and a little cactus. Moving on, I have a little fig tree that I did not think was going to do well because when I first brought it home, it lost all of its leaves. I think it just got stressed or it was winter. I'm not sure which one, but it has since then in the past like two or three weeks grown three little leaves, which I'm really, really happy about. I've also got this Ming Aurelia, I'll put the name on the screen, plant. This is really cool. It was in pretty bad shape when I brought it home. It was on sale for really cheap because it was in such bad shape, but I'm trying to revive it and bring it back to life. And so far it's doing really well. I like that it has, it looks like a little spider when you put it in your hand. It's every, all the little stems have like five leaves on them, I believe. And they just look really cool. Here's the little, shoot of that corn plant that I am trying to regrow after accidentally pulling it out of the main stalk. Moving along, this has been one of my favorite plants to watch grow. It is an elephant ear, a giant taro is its proper name. And when I first got this thing home, one of the leaves was completely yellow. There were only two leaves and one of them was good and one of them was completely yellow. So the yellow one fell off or I cut it off because I, it, it was dying. And since then it has sprouted three new leaves, which I love. And each of those leaves has another little leaf coming off of it. So this one has grown like crazy. I believe uh, one weekend it grew like a leaf and a shoot, like about 12 inches, which was really cool. So when all these leaves come out, they start up really curled and they come out from the stalk of the other tree. And then once they stand up, they like unfurl and they create these really beautiful, elephant ear looking leaves that they're known for. I try to arrange this plant in different ways so that it encourages um, growth towards the sun because it always wants to grow towards the sun, which makes it really heavy in one direction. So I rotate it pretty often to try to encourage the leaves to like balance out a little bit, which has been working really well for me. This is actually one of my favorite plants. It is a Japanese maple. I, this is like the one of the first plants I picked up. I love Japanese maples. I fell in love with them when I was in Portland, Oregon. I went to a, a Japanese garden and had such a good time looking at all the different types of plants there. And I saw a Japanese maple, fell in love with the shape of the leaves. This one lost all of its leaves for winter, but is starting to grow new ones, which you can see the little baby ones right at the top. I am obsessed with him. I'm so glad that he's pulling through and growing new leaves. And I can't wait to see what he looks like in the spring. This little plant next to it is called a begonia, which is actually a flowering plant. 
any of you can tell there's like many different types of begonias mine is like growing like crazy i actually had to stake it up but it has these little flowers hiding underneath the leaves over here and it's been fun to watch it grow as well the one next to it is a nerve plant this one is called a chicken gizzard plant there are many different varieties of nerve plants but they're called nerve plants because in the leaves you can actually see all the little like veins and nerves that it has and it's just got really pretty colors i like this one a lot too it hasn't grown a whole lot since i got it but it is really pretty and doing really well over here i've got a dumb cane plant they call it a dumb cane because if you chew on it it'll make your mouth and your throat numb apparently i haven't done it i don't want to do it banks doesn't touch it and uh yeah it's it's I was it was gifted to me over Christmas by Joey's mom she said that she'd had it for a really long time but doesn't really know how to take care of it so she sent it to my house and now I'm trying to take care of it this little boy is a little tree I'll put the name of it on the screen he's really cute he's only about like six inches tall he's really small the video actually makes him look bigger than he is but he's been really cute to grow he's like my baby Christmas tree and this is Banks Things I've been growing for about five years now. She's a wonderful houseplant. Next to the dumb cane, I have a peace lily, which is like the funeral flower, the flower that everyone gives on funerals. Uh, I didn't know that when I got this plant. I just thought it was really beautiful. I thought the leaves are really dark green and just really like the way that it looks. This one is pretty easy to take care of because it starts to wilt when it needs to be watered and that's how you know that it's thirsty so you water it when the leaves are wilty and then they all stand back up again it's really cool it's got these little cool pods that flower next to it i've got a chestnut chinese money tree i'll put the name of it on the screen but it has a braided stem which i'm obsessed with i got it this way from ikea i love it it's supposed to bring you good fortune in life and so I've been taking really good care of it. <laughs> Moving on into the kitchen, this is where I've got the most like vining plants. I like to put them all on like top shelves and just watch them like cascade down all my shelves. I have a regular ivy and then I've gotten, well I've got a bunch of golden pothos that I have taken off of a mother plant and separated. It was getting too big for its pot so I put it in all these little pots and I want to try to sell them. Uh, I think it's been really fun for me to take care of plants and I would like to do this more. So I am propagating a bunch of plants to try to sell, hopefully at a farmer's market in my town in the springtime. Really long golden pothos is the one that all the other ones came off of and this thing grows like crazy. It has grown like probably like two feet since I got it. I'm also trying to grow little avocado seeds. I took the pits of the avocados and you just put them, um, you suspend them over water, the bottom inch of them will be in the water itself and then you just wait a while. So we'll see how these goes. This is a really cool little plant. It's an arrowhead plant. I got him a couple weeks ago and it says low light, but I don't, I think that they need more light than than what the sign says. So be careful if you get an arrowhead plant. They do need more light than what you would anticipate. Going over here, this is a dark mystery plant. I actually got this at the same time that I got the arrowhead plant. I got this because it said low light, but this plant is not a low light plant. It completely, when I got it, it was beautiful and healthy and all the leaves were like kind of firm and standing up. And then after two days of being in a dark room, it just completely wilted the leaves got really soft and so I watered him and stuck him in light for a day and he just like completely popped back it to life. Keep these things watered, keep them in some light. I don't know why it says low light. They don't like as much low light as you, as the sign says. This is Bingo, my little bamboo. I've had him for about two years. I got him in Chinatown in Philadelphia. And then moving into the bathroom, I have this plant, which is a flowering plant. When I got it, it had a bunch of really beautiful crimson red flowers on it, which they all fell off for the winter and it turned into just like a stick. It did not look good. I put it in the bathroom in hopes that it would get a lot of moisture and sun in here. And then it sprouted all these new leaves in a chunk. So all of the leaves that you see coming from it are all from this new shoot. And I'm excited to see what it does in spring. 
This is a little shiny bristle fern that I have. He is not doing super great. I got him kind of cheap from the store because he wasn't doing super great, but I think he will do well in a bathroom where it stays pretty humid. And then here are a couple more golden pothos leaves that I've propagated and all are starting to root, which is super exciting. Okay, that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite plant was in my house. And tell me about a plant that you think I should try to find or add to my collection. I added a bunch of plants that I really wanted to my Amazon wish list. Um, so feel free to check that out because I would like to start like propagating them and then like sending them to you guys. I think that would be a really cool way for me to like stay in touch with you guys. Like what better, what better gift can you get than a plant? So if I get gifted a plant, I'll try to clone it, propagate it, whatever, and then send it back to you guys. So thank you in advance for that. Stay tuned next week where I will show you how to propagate your own plants. Should be really cool. Okay, adios.